How are we doing, guys? Welcome to the preview and the predicted lineup. Inter Milan against Arsenal Champions League. And this is going to be one of the toughest games that we could face in the Champions League. Ah, why have I got this feeling this game has nil-nil written all over it? Two sides that have not even conceded a goal in the Champions League yet. Um, a side that sits second in um, Serie A. Very, very good side. When you look at a lot of their games and the wins and they very rarely concede. They did have quite a crazy game recently where they drew 4-4 um, against Juve. But apart from that, they're normally very tight at the back. Um, they've got some exceptional players. Um, we're going to have to deal with the likes of Turam and Martinez and even Mkhitaryan. Um I don't think there's too many issues on an injury front. For us, it might be a little bit of the opposite. I know that the media are portraying still with the headline that we've got five, six, seven injuries and whatnot. But again, I think that's just being sensationalised and it's just for a title because when you then go and read who the injuries are, they're mentioning Kieran Tierney and Tommy Asu and players like that who haven't been involved at all and they're not going to be involved, um, especially Kieran Tierney. So I'm looking and I'm going, well, why are you mentioning him for? Again, it's just for the headline to make it look worse than it is. Some good news. Martin Odegaard is back training and I've seen the images. They were all over um, Sky and everything else and he's out with the team he's training and um, it looks very much like he's back now remember at the time of me recording this I haven't seen Mikel Arteta's press conference or anything else um, Champions League it's normally done very late in the evening when they arrive over in Italy um, and they'll obviously be flying out this afternoon um, after this you know training session that they've had this morning but um, it's very good news do I think he will start no um, because he's been out for over a month and it's one of those where, you know, if you can get him some minutes in this game and then he looks to start the Chelsea game, maybe. Yeah, but for this one, probably just him being back in the squad and getting some minutes and um, that could give, you know, everybody a lift, um, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch. There's been a lot going on with Edu departing, um, obviously the result at the weekend and Listen, at the end of the day, clubs always go through a, a bad patch here and there. We had ours last year, if you remember, in December. We had that really bad patch and Fulham, West Ham, etc. And we went on holiday to Dubai and came back and went on that amazing run and nearly won the league title. Um, so, listen, I'd rather have this little dip now than later on in the year when it's unrepairable and you can't catch up or anything. And Man City losing was a bonus. Um, and some might say this is a little bit cocky or big-headed, but I'd rather be seven points behind Liverpool than Man City. That's just my opinion anyway. But fair play to them. They're there at the moment. We'll see. Um, but yeah, they, listen, like I said, this game... Um, they're two places ahead of us in this crazy group phase thing, whatever it is that they do now. Um, no goals conceded by either side. They've uh, gone to the Etihad already on their first week. Uh, drew nil-nil with Man City and they had some really good chances in that game as well. Um, so yeah, they're a very, very dangerous side. And going to the San Siro is never, ever easy. Been there multiple times uh, to watch Arsenal against Inter. And against AC, um, one sticks out in particular, and that's the 5-1 against Inter Milan, where Thierry Henry was just unplayable. Um, but we don't have Thierry Henry in our ranks, do we? But um, yeah, listen, um, I'd like to see Mikel go a little brave with this one as well. Um, I would like to see us, you know, try and get ourselves a goal and try and get a win, because that would give absolutely everything to the confidence um, if we can go and get a win but believe me 
it will be very, very tough, that's for sure. So with that said, let's go and get into the predicted lineup. Starting off in goal, David Raya. Very, very straightforward. Right back, Ben White. Bring him back into his normal position. Take Thomas Partey out of there for as well as he's done and that he can kind of cover when needed. Go back to normality. Uh, right centre-back, William Saliba. Very, very straightforward. Left centre-back, Gabriel. Again, very, very straightforward. Uh, left back, Jurian Timba. Um, again, it's very, very straightforward. Um, Calafiori is not going to be back um, from his knock. Um, and I think that's the strongest option. And that's a very, very strong, you know, backline is pretty much first choice, some will say. Um, so I'm very, very happy with that. Uh, in the midfield, first of all, Thomas Partey playing at the base, being the creator, opening things up. And hopefully he has a really big game. It's simple. Uh, on the right hand side, Bukayo Saka. Uh, the one thing I will say with European games in comparison to the Premier League is that so far, touch wood, um, not a lot of sides double up on him. Um, but Inter Milan, different prospect. Um, it's going to be tough and he will have a, you know, his work cut out. But um, he's a big game player at the end of the day. World class, in my opinion. And um, these are the games that he should thrive on. And I'm looking forward to seeing him and how he does in this game. Um, next to him, I will start Ethan Wanieri. It's as simple as that. If Odegaard's not back ready yet, it's something that we're clearly missing. I wouldn't go with Marino in there and Declan Rice. It's just too rigid, too defensive-minded. It's just no spark. And um, he looks like a kid that has no fear. And wouldn't be overawed by the San Siro or anything else. And would just go out there and play like he's in his back garden, not the San Siro. That's what I go with. Um, alongside him, Declan Rice. Again, a very straightforward one for me. Um, on the left-hand side, Martinelli. Um, not been really happy with him of late in the last couple of games and what's gone on and everything else. Some say that since Calafiori's come out, he's kind of regressed again. And listen... The biggest issue is that he's been at fault for a couple of our goals because he loses the ball at the far end and then it breaks and gets straight down the other end. But yeah, um, he's our main you know, threat on that side. So it's him that I will go with. Um, and then up front as the main striker, Kai Havertz. Very, very straightforward as well, to be honest with you. Um, and yeah, it'd be nice if he got himself a goal and it'd be nice if he could win us the game. But we will wait and see. So listen, that is pretty much it for the preview and the predicted lineup. Um, it's what it says on the tin at the end of the day. Two very, very good defensive sides. Two sides that have not even conceded a goal in the Champions League. If we got a high scoring game, I would be shocked. If we got a nil-nil, I would not be shocked. It's as simple as that, really. Um but we'll wait and see what happens. Um, let's get through this game. If we can get a win, it would be brilliant for the confidence. And it will take us into the game against Chelsea perfectly. Um, a defeat doesn't even cross my mind. Um, but yeah, listen, let me know in the comments section what you think. Um, do you agree or disagree with that lineup? If you do disagree, what would you go with, etc., etc.? Um, so yeah, big game. San Siro, Inter Milan and... Um, we're going to see what happens. So if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.